everybody. My name is Alan, and on behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, when I was driving over here to do the show tonight, I was listening to the radio, I was listening to a music station, and they broke in with a news bulletin. The news bulletin was that the United States overseas and in different countries are on the highest terrorist alert that the they have short of war or whatever the, the classification is. I just thought, you know, here we go again. I mean, here it is, is that there is an experience of love. There is an experience of the connection between us all. There is an experience of what we call the oneness, of that truth that lies within us and connects us all because it's all really what we are. It's that experience of love that we all can have. And yet, somehow, as we go around our day-to-day -day lives, what we see more of and what people seem to recognize more of is that separation. I mean, I wrote the screenplay once, and in the screenplay it was that if everybody in, uh, in Israel and, and all the, the neighboring uh, Arab countries all got amnesia at the same time, do you think they know who, who they hated? Do you think they know who to fight, who to kill, who to strap the bomb to and blow up, whose jets to drop where? Would, would anybody know that? Do the little children come in this world and come in with that kind of hate, with that level of terrorism, with that level of, of disregard for their life and others? No, it just doesn't work that way. So what do we do from the time where those incredible children coming in with a joy to be alive, with a joy to be in this potentially Garden of Eden and, and evolve into, into a terrorist, evolve into a, a country that makes state-sponsored terrorism on all the world. How does that happen? And whatever way it happens, there are theories and theories and theories about how it happens, but it's our job to bring that consciousness of that connection, of that light, of that love into as many places in this world, in ourselves, that we can. That is the job of anybody watching this show tonight. To, to spread, because people wouldn't watch this show if they weren't interested to some extent, unless they were my parents or, you know, or somebody who would watch it because of a relationship. But anybody, mostly anybody who's watching this show is watching it because they want to know more about the experience of love. And don't we all think it's time that that terrorism, individually, collectively, the separations, the countries, the, the, the different races and religions, all the things that we use to separate us finally comes to an end. And tonight, again, because that's what Bridging Heaven and Earth is about, this is what this show is about, it is dedicated to that experience, it is dedicated to, to bringing people to everyone in the world who have that experience, who want to share that experience. And we have people with us tonight whose lives, again, are dedicated to, to spreading the love, to experiencing the love and spreading the love. We have Carol Adrian uh, with us tonight. She's an internationally known author. Uh, she's a speaker. She's a leader of the transformational movement. She's the author of seven books that are translated into 14 or 15 languages already. And we were talking earlier, probably in some total of books have sold over a million. And every one, in one way or another, is about that consciousness raising, about that love, about that experience into the light. Uh, her two books, the two more recent books, The Purpose of Your Life and Find Your Purpose, Change Your Life. She's also the co-author with uh, James Redfield of the experimental, experimental Guides for the Celestine Prophecy and the Tenth Insight. And we all know, you know how extraordinary those books were and how they ch helped change the world. Uh, she's been on the Oprah show. She's, her, her books have been on the New York Times bestseller list. But more important is that she wants to know love and share love. And that's why she's here. That's why she's on the show. That's why she writes these books. And we have with us an old friend of the show who I'm sure people who've watched the show often have seen, uh, Sudama. He's a friend of ours. He's just very supportive of the show. will come on whenever whenever we need him to come on, whenever that's the right fit for the show. He's a master musician. You've seen him play on the show The Didgeridoo, flutes, guitars, sitars. Uh, tonight he's going to be playing flutes and guitars and singing. He's going to be singing, uh, I'm not sure if they're both on his CDs, but he has a CD out. His personal CD is Sudama, and his band is called Dreamtime Continuum. Uh, we're just honored, again, to have Carol and, and Sudama with us to share their love in their way, and that's really what it's about. 
And really, for all of us, it's got to be time. Well, whatever we're doing that's causing us to feel separation, there is a better way to feel. When we don't feel that separation, there's an incredible joy and incredible love in walking on this earth and sharing that love with so many people who, who do want to experience it that way. So as you normally do at this time, please join me in a short meditation, and then we'll be joined with Carol and Sudama, and again, there's a chance to really go deeper, to know more, to experience more, and to let that love fl flow. So please join me. Hi. So, I think we're going to start the, uh, the show tonight with Sudama doing a new song of his. It's written in the last three or four months, I think, Green Evolution. It's uh, written and performed by Sudama. And listen, I mean, we, we take the show in the United States and California. There's this energy crisis, all the insanity going on around that. And this is what he was moved to do, to, to explore that part of the separation, that part of the insanity. So, Sudama? They say that in California, there's no power. What about all that sunshine? On my shoulder, it burns and burns in the solar tills. It turns and turns into windmills. And in the waterfalls that flow through a all green, green. Evolution, green. Solution. Cause we're caught in the grip of a collective trip of nuclear and fossil fuel, immaculate deception. It seems like we've all been fooled But look at what they've done to California Took the money and run, can't afford you Sold our power to the highest bidder So they got their bonus just a little bit quicker Get off the grid, take a solar shower Tell them we don't need their power Evolution, green, green, solution. Mm -hmm. 
Vision fusion, so confusing. No more nuclear power, please be using. Coal and oil are the wrong track. Let's get rid of all the smokestacks. The power, power is everywhere. Nikola Tesla got it right out of the air. Zero point revelation. Tomorrow's celebration. So get off the grid, take a solar shower. Tell them we don't need their power. They say that in California, there's no power. What about all that sunshine? On my shoulder, it burns and burns in the solar tills. It turns and turns in the windmills. And in the water falls a flow through a small green grid. Evolution, green Green solution, green, green evolution, green, green. Thank you, Sugar. That was wonderful. Thank you. Wow. Wow, that was fantastic. So, yeah, we're on the set with Carol. Welcome. Thank you. That was wonderful. Yeah, wasn't that I beautiful? That. Yeah, yeah, I love having the music. Yeah, yeah. The, we found that, you know, the uh, just started off with music and then somewhere in the middle to have that music really so adds a lot tone. to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, so, in your books, you talk a lot about like synchronicity and intuition mm -hmm. and. How, how would you describe that and how do people get more in touch with that and live their lives more? Right, I get that question quite a bit about synchronicity. I like to think of it as a coincidence where two or more events come together and you can't quite figure out why, but you have this sense because you get kind of excited about it that something is going on that's greater than what you can imagine or something that beyond what you would have planned. It, all, it works out even better. There was an example, I had a class the other day and uh, there was a man in there who works uh, in actually for the power PG&E <laughs> and he's a guy who puts the electrical stuff together <laughs> but his dream is to do more uh, creative work so he wants to get into doing voiceovers and so he went to his 30th high school reunion and he was talking to an old you know high school friend there and he said yeah I really want to get into doing uh, voiceovers and the guy said oh I work at KQED and I'm looking for somebody to do voiceovers wow. So that's a kind of yeah, synchronicity right. where he's thinking about something and then it actually, uh -huh. some event happens that stimulates it further, takes the takes the idea further. And how do we get so that, you know, those things start to happen more in our lives, that our t intuition seems to move us, that, you know, right. we're more, I think you talk about being in the flow and things like right, that. Right, being in the flow, definitely. I like to think of this whole idea of life purpose as a journey and a, and a flow rather than an end result. and. Um, well, I think, you know, when you start paying attention to these synchronicities, to these so-called coincidences, that you begin to see them more, even little ones. I mean, if you, you see a license plate that means something to you or has some kind of a message, you begin to look for them. And I think you start seeing them more. And then, you know, you don't always know what they mean right away. So that, I think you have to understand that. But if you begin to open up to the idea that there is something going on that you may not understand with your logical mind, you begin to see them more. So it's really important to have a, an open mind. Almost a sense of wonder. Right, exactly. Wonder, awe, and questioning. And it, you know what I found is really helpful? Is to, to really kind of put yourself on assignment. I have a friend that I have studied like a lab rat. She's very, very interesting to me. Uh, and she started, she, what, she, what I started uh, really noticing about her, she went from one career to another and it happened sort of effortlessly because she was following synchronicities. And at one point I said to her, she's in my book and I talk about her, she was a real estate agent and she got into being a travel writer. And I said, Corey, how, how do you have these things happen to you? It just flows along and an opportunity opens up. And she says, I put myself on assignment. For example, one, at one point she, she got into writing 
which is, you know, a pretty hard field to get into, travel writing. And uh, she at one point wanted to do more presentation work, but she didn't know how to handle audio-visual equipment. And so she happened to be going to Hawaii on the airplane, and she sat next to this man who was putting his equipment up overhead. He was a professional speaker, and he had all the audio-visual equipment she could ever want to learn about wow. in the overhead bin, and he had four hours to explain it to her. And the free. flight was delayed. <laughs> so, <laughs> again, it was a synchronicity. She couldn't right. have planned that, and yet it fed right into what her question was. So it's very important to have a clear question, and then sooner or later, what would be, you're going to get an answer. What would have been her question? That she wanted to do this her, thing and she needed yeah. certain skills that were... Yeah, it was a simple, she, clear thought that she wanted to learn more about audiovisual equipment. And there and it was. she kept an open mind. She didn't know how that was going to happen. Right. And as it turned out, probably she thought to open up to her seatmate. I mean, a lot of times we don't even talk to the people we're sitting next to with the whole flight. And we hope they and, talk you know, to the end, you think, that. oh, that was a Thank great God, connection. <laughs> Oh, I have a tendency to be a misanthrope in those kind of situations. Right, I know. We do. We just see, and so a lot of times, if our personality type is to be aloof or to be in our own world and we don't want any distractions, we may miss out on the synchronicity. So it helps to be a little bit more open. And how do we develop this openness? <laughs> we say that's how I fly. <laughs> you want some right. tips on yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> give me a few tips here. Will you? Well, let's see. You make eye contact. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. It's, yeah. Um, what well, else? It's something easy. It's no, an attitude. It's, I think uh, it's an attitude that life is kind of a trip, <laughs> you know, and you never know what's going to happen or who you're going to meet. And uh, just, to, you know, to be yourself, really. I mean, you don't have to go overtly. Um, you know, Hi! <laughs> when I was writing this stuff on the Celestine. Are you my secret? Exactly. When I was writing this, this uh, the workbook on the Celestine Prophecy, I was doing all these workshops with people. This, this man came up, one of the students came up to me in the class, and he says, you know, in the Celestine Prophecy, the man is, the, the protagonist in the novel is always going around and asking questions about what he should do next and, you know, opening up to people and looking for messages. That was the whole, what the book was about a lot. And this one man said to me, well, he said, I was at the airport the other day, and I saw this woman I really wanted to get to meet, so I went up and I said to her, I think you have a message for me. She, she just like backed away, right. like get out of my face. Yeah, thing. the message is if you take a step closer, I'm going to call right. the police. You can be open, but you can be too open too. <laughs> That's so, right. You know, so to find the balance is find the balance. Yes, be open, but you don't have to be too assertive about it. Be you know, hysterical. Be there's a out. difference between yeah. being open and hysterical. <laughs> And so you have to be like alert to the type of situation and things like that. Right. Well, how, how do you appropriate? develop this like capacity to like be balanced and not hysterical and not closed? And, you know, just by doing it and seeing people's reaction. If enough people call the police, right. you know to. Right. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to go to that extreme, Alan. Let's no, face it. No, that. And the third time, you should have learned the lesson by that. If you, you're right. going too right. far. And a lot of people I know you talk about it, someone following your passion. Now, how does that fit in? Well, that's another part of it, uh, when you're following your life purpose. I see. I believe that our purpose is born, we're born with it, we come in with it, we already have it. So the idea of finding it is not, I think it's already um, inside of you, it's like kind of an organizing it. principle that keeps you noticing synchronicities or realizing that, hey, that wasn't an accident that that happened, you know. So um, I think that in that sense, our purpose is something that, um, it sort of triggers off our attention to look at a certain thing or to follow, you know, to follow it. So I think what you have to do if you're going to follow uh, your passion is really begin to pay attention to your energy level. What excites you? What has some interest to you? You know, depending on how bored you are that day or how tired you are or how many hours of sleep you've had. But if you keep sensing where your energy is going, that's going to lead you in a direction that's at least interesting to yourself. and and it probably will pan out in some way. It's got, there's a purpose for it. So I think that your purpose is inborn and that there are no accidents so that you will be in contact with somebody who's going to open a door for the you. The next step. The next then, step. Mm -hmm. and, and do you find that, I mean, in a way you're talking about a spiritual path and you're not putting it in spiritual, in traditional spiritual terms. Would you say that that is a fairly accurate? Because yeah. you're talking about finding, you know, like, right your life's purpose and, and leading a life in harmony with your destiny. Mm -hmm. And yet, you're not talking about like the traditional forms of meditation or things like that. Do, do they fit any part? Definitely, in your, yeah? yeah, definitely. Because um, 
you know, you talked about being balanced, and I think that's a key, but I don't think a lot of us think of being balanced as, you know, and is something that we need to do all the time. It, being balanced is really something you have to do on almost a moment by moment basis. You know, you can't just become balanced and then your life works forever. It's like every day you have to get up and think, okay, a little activity, a little rest, a little food, a little exercise, a little right. interaction, a little rest, you know, well, just recreation. be in touch with yourself yeah. and, and know the mm -hmm. difference. Right. Being in touch with your energy and really listening to your intuition. I mean, how many times have you gone into something and thought later and it didn't work out? And you no, thought, you knew it you way knew that. before. You knew that way before. Yeah, but there was some idea you had. Yeah, right. I was talking about that. You know, if you don't have a concept about something. So in essence, you're saying, how do you live in every moment? Right. How are you alive in right. every moment and bringing all your awareness into that right. moment? Right. And that's the attempts of that's all the spiritual, the spiritual path, path right, right there. Right. Be here now. You know, you can't right. say it any better than right. that, really. <laughs> <And shorter. laughs> I'm sorry. Not he, in English. He said it. That's <laughs> it. Right, exactly. Thank you, Ram Dass. Right. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's like, it, you know, so many times we get caught up in this idea of what's my life purpose? And the big myth of that, I think, is thinking that it's a job title, because it isn't. It's much bigger than that. Well, it's a breath by breath by breath yeah. by breath. Yeah. yeah. What's the purpose for our moment here together? Right. You know, we have a purpose now. So it's, there's no waiting for this life purpose to kick in. It's not Well, like we don't have a future and we don't have a yeah. past, so what it, right. you know. And just getting all, there isn't yeah. going to be the, yeah. the payoff. It's the getting there, that the, is the, the, the journey the to journey. it. So, yeah, that's a lot of what I work with people and, and you travel the world basically doing workshops and mm -hmm. you know talking about your books and all that well i talk i i work with the principles i'm not really talking about the books but i'm talking right. about the principles it, that yeah are, that are about and it's this is a big question for a lot of people is what is my purpose and so you know that's i think we all so that's that. their door into that be here now right i mean because ultimately they don't want to know their purpose they want to be here now and that's then their right. purpose will unfold exactly from that. like if, if you think about what is the point of having your purpose if you know if you knew what your purpose was what then would you have would you then feel and there's happy? nothing you could say what your purpose is you would be living it and it would be always right. evolving and changing right. you'd be like the purpose in motion in essence right and I think a lot of what our purpose is, is are things that we do without even realizing it. We don't even think it's a big deal. Like, you know, you probably love to talk, right? Because you're a talk show host. I mean, you love to communicate, trade right, ideas. I live alone on a hill, so there's, All right. <laughs> there's a balance there, too. That's right. No, I know what you mean. Yeah. A lot of times I think people get criticized as children for the things that are actually part of their life purpose. Right. I mean, what, I don't know, did anybody criticize you when you were a kid to say you shouldn't, you talk too much? <laughs> Where or do you want to start? What, what did they say kid? about you? When, you mean, when did they stop? Yeah. What, what, did, <laughs> <laughs> what were some of the things? Do you remember what you... Well, I was, you know, I was always like, you know, I, I guess there was the, the uh, always the uh, choice between childish and childlike. Right. <laughs> I think never. Grow up. Show, yeah, right. You know, which side, you know. Right. I mean, how can you be doing the things you're doing and being that age and having graduated, for, you know, doing the things I've done and still, you know, working on an organic farm, you know, living on a mm -hmm. commune after mm -hmm. graduating law school. It was like, you know, picking hornworms off tomatoes. <laughs> it's right. like, this guy's a wacko. How does that fit in? Fit in into the their, yeah. to their concept right. of an evolving being who's right. not going to be a baby his whole yeah. life. People you know? like us to be very consistent, right. don't they? Exactly. Yeah, habitual. Yeah. Because it's easy, because yeah. there's never a challenge. I mean, right. it's like you're a Coke machine, you're a walking Coke machine. You put the dollar in, now, now I don't know. I don't do it too well. How many dollars is it now? I you don't, don't know, do it okay. either. I mean, it used to be you'd throw a few quarters, and now it's only need like 22 quarters or so, you know? Right. So, yeah, I mean, that's how people, and you push the button, and the Coke comes down, or you push mm -hmm. the root beer button. and But to be in the moment, it's like that's where freedom is, that's where the infinite lives. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we want to be. We and want to be happy. Exactly. We want to feel like right. we're making a contribution. Well, where do you do that in the future when you know what your purpose is? I think it works like our mind thinks, so, okay, if I can figure this out, I'll know what to do. I'll do it. I'll do it well, and then I'll be happy. Right. And then, and then I'll get the wife and I'll get the kids. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, there's the time right. schedule. That's a whole right. other trip is right. the time schedule. Yeah, i got to do this at a certain age and this at a certain age, and then I'll be okay. And so then I retire. Maybe that's not happy. your what path. You know, that right. may not be what you came in to do. Yeah, there's no actual... I mean, there's no right or wrong, and there's no, no, and all those things. And the only way to be there is to have no past and future and to be in the moment. Right. And that's why it's always the same. Right. It's always the same result is really what people want. And there are all the different tools and techniques to get there. 
And that's where meditation fits in, when you asked earlier right. about meditation. Yeah. And how, how do you see it fitting in? Well, and any time that you can get quiet and drop down a little bit beyond the din around you, you're going to touch in with your intuition more. I think you really have to listen inside, and you also have to listen and look at the signs outside, so you have this kind of dual attention. Because there's actually no separation. I mean, they are right. one if we right. can we come can into that it balance. Inside yeah. and outside. Right. But, you know, just being alert and paying attention. You know, when is your time going to be, when are you going to be called up to do something? Well, a meditation is just being alert with the senses shut down. Right. I mean, you just want to be alert when your eyes are open and your ears are mm -hmm. open, and the same way inside, you know, so. But when you see what's inside, then it's, people don't really normally see what's inside. Right. And well, that's when meditation. We're pleasing everybody else. Right. So we look good. Now, how, how do you think that we develop that, you know, that's so important to us, just the two things you mentioned, you, know, you look marvelous, and, you know, and pleasing other people. Mm -hmm. how, does it, how does that, how do we start doing that? Well, um, first of all, you know, I think it's important to know what are your values? What do you want out of life, you know? And where are you at, at what stage are you at? But don't um, people just want to be happy and they don't really know it? I mean, they think they want to, like you said, married and rich right. and big car right. and you know, little kid, <laughs> big girl, little kid. Yeah. But really they want to be happy and feel good. That's right. They want to be happy. But most people don't know good. that. They don't think so? Not not right on the surface, not consciously. Or they think being happy will be to add, you know, these... It comes after they've done a lot of work. Right. It's been a lot of things, a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. titles, a lot of you know, marriage, a happy marriage, right, children, right. The, the, connection the normal to family. Kind of things. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, in some, you know, some really like I was talking at the opening, you strap a bomb and then you're going to go to, you know, heaven. Right. What's, I don't know, that, mm -hmm. you know, that religion, but, mm -hmm. you yeah, know, that's where you're going to enter the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. when you die for the holy war. Mm -hmm. well, so I mean, we have a lot of wacko yeah. ways of looking at this. That's right. There's a lot of different ways to go, <laughs> right. to come in and go out. But, but ultimately, we just want to be happy, feel good, feel love. Right, I suppose so. But I wonder about the people with the bombs strapped on them. Well, I mean, what do they want? What do they really want? I don't, I can't well, presume to know what they're after there. But wouldn't you say it's some, like, uh, disharmony in that, you know, root experience, that that's the way they're going to find that right. love that they're seeking? Everybody mm -hmm. wants to seek that love and feel somehow, because mm -hmm. that's what they're made of. Or, Right. How you describe? It's an interesting, I mean, I don't know what the answer is. So you want to study them like you want to study Yeah, I, I, you know. You, you, <laughs> you might have to hang around in different circles. I have my idea of what I think is driving them, but I don't know what motivates them. I don't, I don't know. What's your idea? I gave mine. Yeah. What do you think? I, I don't know, Alan. I really can't say what it is, what drives people to do these kinds of things. It's more, it must be some sort of a, they, they are attached to an idea, and they're attached to an ideal. And somehow they're disconnected from the consequences of what they're actually planning to do. I don't know any other right. way to say it than that. It's inexplicable, uh -huh. but you know it happens, and you it's can't so say it's not part of the human experience. I mean, that lets you know, yeah, there's right, a yeah. range here. You know, I Absolutely. think of the Earth really as a theme park. It's right. like you yeah, come here and you take your chances. I, kind of, I don't think that's a very spiritual point of view, but that's Which what I think. Theme park? Yeah, I uh, that's what I've come good. up with lately. Yeah. All right, well, let's see what Saddam is going to come up with for this second set. Saddam is going to perform a song that he has written. It's called Buddha's Blues, and, you know, you heard the first one, so you know how good he is. So, Saddam. <laughs> Everybody's suffering, everybody's suffering, everybody suffers and they don't know why. And everyone's suffering, everybody's suffering, everyone suffers and they don't know why. It's a hard road, it's a hard road, it's a hard road. That leads back home It's a hard road It's a hard road It's a hard road That royal road 
Well, I won't ask any questions And I won't tell you no lies We don't find some peace of mind We won't be smiling when we die We don't find some peace of mind We won't be smiling when we die Gatte gatte para gatte, para son gatte body swa. Gone gone to the other shore, gone gone to the other shore. Gatte gatte para gatte, para son gatte body swa. It's a hard road, it's a hard road, it's a hard road. That leads back home. It's a hard road. It's a hard road. It's a hard road. That royal road. And everybody's suffering. And everybody's suffering. Everybody suffers and they don't know why. And everyone's suffering. Everybody's suffering. Everyone suffers when a man can cry. Well, I won't ask you questions, and I won't tell you no lies. We don't fight. Some peace of mind. We won't be smiling when we die. We don't find some peace of mind. We won't be smiling when we die. Gate gate para gate para sam gate bodhishwa. Gone gone to the other shore. Gone gone. Break on through to the other side. 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 Gate gate para gate para sam gate body swa. Beautiful. Thank you, Sudan. Thank you. So back on the set with Carol. So I guess we both agree that it's better if we have the experience of harmony rather than disharmony and passion and love. What tools would you suggest that you know people can do on a daily basis that you know can really help them have that experience? Well, on a daily basis, I think it's important before you get out of bed to kind of think how you want your day to go. Set an intention. Think about what you can, you know, what's on the back of your mind. Is there something you need to follow through on? And uh, you know, it's in, in basically to have the idea that you want to enjoy your life that day. And in my, what I've read and, and really studied, it seems to me that the best way to is to focus on what you want rather than what you don't want. A lot of times we get out and we get so bound up in what we don't want that we start attracting more of that into our lives. So, you know, you, I'm sure you've heard of the law of attraction where you, things are attracted into your life according to what you're emanating out, what you're putting out there. So 
you know, if you want what you if you want good things to come into your life, then it behooves you to start opening up and putting out the, being the kind of person that you would like to have other people be around you. So you know, that's these are all simple kind of very basic spiritual ideas. But it's like the golden rule, you know, do unto others. That's that's in every spiritual tradition. So we can do that on a daily basis. It's it's very simple. Some of these things, staying in the flow. I like to use the acronym of flow, F L O W, because it's easy for me to remember when I get in a place where I, you know, kind of forget what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, in flow, it, it occurred to me one day I was working with this uh, woman who uh, was an actress, wanted to be an actress in L.A., and. Um, I asked her, you know, she, she was trying to write an affirmation, and instead of saying, I am an actress, you know, most affirmations are very positive, I am now a successful actress. Well, she couldn't quite believe in that. It somehow didn't feel right. So I said, well, you know, you're going to auditions, you're studying acting, you have friends in acting, you're showing up, uh, can you say that you are now in the flow of your acting career? And she said, oh yeah, that was okay. So I started thinking about this whole word flow, and that flow state that you know, athletes get there, they get into the zone where everything is in a timeless state. That's a sign when you're on your life purpose. I have this actually, now that I'm thinking of it, I had my grandson was born last week and a bunch of friends were all in the hospital room with my daughter and her husband and we were just there for like 12 or 15 hours and it was that flow state because it was like I wasn't reading a book, I wasn't bored, I was just sort of being there. And it was fabulous. And nothing was going nothing on. Nothing was going on. Her right. labor was progressing and right. so right. on and so forth. But it was like nobody wanted to leave. There was no and time and space. We weren't we aware were of the time. Where you were. Yeah, we were perfect where we were. And it was really one of those magical times. And I was thinking, now, why is this happening like this? It's, you know, and I think you can't help overlook the fact that it is an important time of life coming. You know, it's one of those momentous occasions. But but it's only our illusion of thinking that. That's I mean, right. Like the next that's breath right. is a momentous. Right. Occasion. Otherwise, I could think I'm in a hospital room. So right. what? Right. You know. Right. But I was. It was just wonderful. We all felt it too. So, being in that flow, I, can, I like to go back to that. And remember that because when you're in the flow, the F. I like to. I like to um, remind people to have fun. Because fun is on that continuum of passion that we hear about. You know, Joy. And you know, fun, Joseph yeah. Campbell said, "Follow your bliss, and be following your passion." Well, fun is a, is if, if, if flow started with a P H, I would have used that. But right, no, uh, the fun is if you're having fun, you are on track for your something's going, going for better. you, yeah, right? right yeah. And F also stands for focus, which is focusing on what you want rather than focusing a lot of attention and energy and energy drain on what you don't want. And I think F should also stand for follow through, because a lot of times in so you're making it's not so easy. Anymore. I know it's, it's not so easy. See, three, okay. I know we all love the effortless path, and I love it too. If you would have done one for F, one for L, one yeah, for W, I know. But I have our to, audience had a chance, <laughs> not you. I know I have to make it simple, but I want to say follow through is very important right. because no, a lot I'm of times we get this impression we just we sit here. We actually have a high IQ audience. Good, yeah. they can track right. all right. this information. They can write it down. Right. I, I I like to take notes. Right, myself. they tape all the stuff yeah. so they can feel go back. Right. So you so can do all the F's you want. F is there, right. but follow through. And the F word I used to use, so <laughs> note which got me in trouble, we'll leave out. We'll right. leave that out right. for now. Okay. And L, of course, what is L? Love. Right. Do what you love and love what you do. For example, I had a woman who told me, I said this in a class, and she said um, she used to hate paying her bills until she moved her desk over underneath the window where she had a view, and then she liked paying her bills. I was going to say, if you, if you went over, I don't love it. Because I don't right. mind paying it, but I don't exactly love it. Right. I don't think I mind under it, a window. But That's if you right. can at least like it, right. no, it's, it's, it's a lot better, better right. idea. Right. Okay. So like what you do. I mean, if you're doing stuff you don't like, then ask yourself, why am I doing this? I mean, do there, I may, be, to, there right. may be a very good reason right. and you, you justify it, but sometimes we just accept things and we don't right. ask ourselves, do right. I love it? Yeah, right. right. Exactly. exactly. You want to watch the habitual activities because that's a killer for your life purpose. You just are wasting yeah, a lot of time. Yeah, you're a machine, there. and you're not a human being. Right, and just find out why are you doing it. So L is really for uh, love, and it's also for listen to your intuition. Listen, because you're getting information all the time. Are you listening it's to it? Available. Right, and so I'll just stop there with L. Two L's. Yeah, I you think that's enough. Three or four L's <laughs> to get it. I could go on, but uh, oh, I like oh because there we go back to staying open. 
Now, how do you stay open? Okay, this is how I, I think about staying open, is that when something happens to you, you know, it could be an event of some kind, it could be good, it could be not so good. So you never the way really we know. Define it. Right. So right. to be open, if you keep the idea that something could be good, you don't know what's gonna, you know, what it's gonna come out of it. So at least be open to having an opportunity there. Even if it looks like an obstacle, I find that obstacles can be very interesting and they can actually force you to do something that you really need to do, but you it wouldn't do it out of your habit. Out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Exactly. One time well I I started got I, I started writing books actually because I needed to make more money. And it forced me it forced me to be, because I was doing my, I used to do, uh, well, I still do consultations with numerology. I'm a numerologist. And there was a point where I needed to make more money and supplement my income. And, and the thought came to me, maybe I could help someone write a book. And that developed a whole new strain for me, a whole new career. And it's only one step at a time. So you yeah. start off with the thought that I could help somebody and then you start right. even and By the end of the day, I had a lead to help somebody write a book and I actually right. did ghost write a book. And that was, that gave me the confidence to keep writing. So it wasn't it because just because I needed the money, not because I thought I need a new career. So I think necessity is a big help a lot of times. You know, it's interesting. I think as we develop a subtlety in it, it takes less of a traumatic act to move. Right. Us. So does. we want to develop so it doesn't take. You know that we're on the. You know. Right. I, c I consider this the benefits of age, personally. Right. You think it's an experience. <laughs> Nothing wisdom could come without well, age. Yeah. Well. Perhaps. Maybe not. I, I know a lot of really smart young people. Yeah, I do too. I think, yeah, they're getting smarter, they're getting don't smart, they? They're, they're really getting smarter. smarter. Yeah, they, they don't have to go right. from 40 or 50 years ago over right. and dopey things like right. which is good. I mean, it's, yeah. we need that to happen. Okay, so, so open and oh, open. open obstacles and opportunity. Okay, there, you never know. If something looks bad, give it a chance because it may have some nugget in there. And the last letter is W in flow, F L O W. And W to me is being willing to do whatever it takes. I mean, you, to start this show, you had to do whatever it took to gear up to get into this field, right? Well, you start setting up, it takes yeah. it up. But it always, right. it always takes, I mean, it always takes a certain amount in a physical form mm -hmm. of what we call energy or effort to do anything. Right. So you have to be willing to move yourself into a new spot and follow up and on things. And be grateful. You know, I mean, if each step is, is fun and beautiful and joyous and mm -hmm. then... It, you're having fun no fun matter what happens, right, exactly. what, no matter what the There's end result There's no result, is. right. It's what's the purpose now. And um, I, I like also the idea of just be, just wondering at life. I mean, is it, life is just, it's a wonder. <laughs> I mean, every yeah, day absolutely. you never know what's going to happen every day. I mean, day. the thing we talk about a lot on the show is we're hurtling through space on a ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, what's reasonable? Right. I mean, the whole thing you know, that we have to show we're you know, like gravity, but we're hurtling through space on a ball at right. a zillion miles an hour. Yeah. I mean, so the whole thing is unreasonable. Right. So when we get into this, you know, it's not reasonable. It's like, in what context? Right. <laughs> That's where uncommon sense comes in, you see. Right. So common sense is kind of the habitual thinking, which serves us most, a lot of the time. But the really great moments in our lives really are something we probably did that was uncommon sense. And we did it anyway against what you know, and we can we reach told. a point where we don't have the barriers of that habitualness. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. we've had a momentum of being in so many moments in a row. Right. That that we're not habitual, right. in a sense. Mm -hmm. And that's you know, and that's where like love and re real freedom come in for people. Mm -hmm. And that comes from following what your passion is and investigating things. Because how else are you going to know what your purpose is unless you don't go off down some roads? and check things out. That's yeah, what we, I've done. We talked know. earlier about Don Juan book, Follow mm -hmm. a Path with Heart and Follow it to its right. end. It doesn't matter almost what path, right. as long as it has heart. Just for you, it. heart yeah. for you. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So we solved all the life's problems, now so, what are we going to do? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> any, you have any other words? Any other oh, words? You got the flow. acronyms. <laughs> yeah, you must have another acronym. No? Not really. I, I like flow a lot, so I use that. but. You know, I always, I'm always talking about all of these, uh, these concepts. So, you know, I like to work with people who have specific problems because it's within that specific problem that the answer lies. It's really uh, whatever is up for you right now, what catches your attention is where you're supposed to be focusing. And so you really want to work with the specific questions. And then you can look at it. Well, I have learned this working with people actually. Um, people would say, you know, they would come with, with questions like, well, should I move to Colorado or should I move to Denmark? I mean, you know, what? 
and they would have these questions. They would come to a crossroads. And um, instead of getting caught up in the either or, I think whenever you have a kind of black or white either or perspective, you're probably in trouble. Right. Neither one of them is going to be right, right. Isn't in my be. estimation. Right. Yeah. And I think we do that in order to keep ourselves safe so that we don't have to do anything until we figure it out. We never figure it out. So there's always a third option or fourth option in there. So what I started doing with people in this sense was to um, try to get and elicit from them what is it that you would like to have if you did move to Denmark? What are you looking for there? You know, I want to be close to nature. I want a new you know, culture, I, what is it that would excite you? And then begin to focus your attention on that kind of and make an affirmation out of that instead of staying in the question, which you can do too. And there's another whole path to go there. The question, whatever question you have right now, for anybody who's listening to the show, whatever crossroads you're at, there, there, it's a, it's something that's going to pull you forward. And eventually you'll get some kind of answer if you keep your focus on the question. Or if you turn it around and say, I want to move to a place that's, uh, you know, offers me a good place to live, easy commute, and you know, the things that are important to you, then that thing will show up. Then the answer to that will come to pass. So you can, you can let the question take you somewhere, and you can also set an affirmation or an intention that will then attract into your life exactly those circumstances. And I've seen it happen to millions of people. Well, maybe not millions personally, but thousands of people have told me. Right, they have told me these stories of things that have happened to them that have exactly fallen into place. Right. You know, and I've had it happen in my own life. So you're thinking about something, and all of a sudden that door opens. It's exciting, and that's when you begin to realize that there's something going on that's greater than. And you can lean on that more, lean on that right, which more and trust that more because you find it gives you energy and it works. And it feels better, yeah. and it feels more harmonious, right. and it feels more like the wind is in your sails rather than you're always right. Until you get to a place quick. where you come to a void, right. and you're—I call it the void—but you get to a place when the wind stops, and there, are, there's no, there's the doldrums, and you can't see your way out of it. But right. I think that uh, I have to believe that there's a purpose for that too, because you know we're not What's always it? on this continual up right. phase, and so during those periods of darkness, something is getting reintegrated. They seem dark to us because we, we can't see. Yeah, know, we always we, want to know yeah, where we're, we're headed. Right. But I think that um, you have to kind of lean into that period and assume that there's a purpose for your slowing down. Something's integrating, something's shifting within you, and, and a new question is being born out of you. You know, maybe a new identity is coming out of it. Mm-hmm. And I, I see these, and I, I don't know, I suppose you do too, through the different decades of life. I see the life purpose evolving through stages. Because in my 20s, my, my whole purpose for that period was really to find my identity, which I, I found by getting married to somebody. Mm-hmm. That was how I did it. I didn't mm-hmm. have one, right. literally. And then my 30s seemed to be a period of exploration and creativity, at least in my life. The 40s were a real difficult period. Now, of course, I can tie these into the, the numerology of it, too, and uh, look at that quality. But each decade has seemed as if but it had can other people piece. do, like, flip-flop the decades, kind of? Because, you know... I, I don't know. What was it? Can you think of your 20s, what the purpose might be at the, that point for you? 20s. Were you establishing a career, maybe? Or? I never quite did that, you so didn't do that. Did that. You know, it was interesting. I mean, someone was talking about this... The, but, but I remember thinking in my life is that other people are doing things in different kind of quadrants than I'm mm-hmm. doing them. And not that I'll never do them, but we don't know that. I mean, that remains to be seen a lot of times. Uh, but in terms of, do you deal with individuals? Don't you deal with groups too? I mm-hmm. mean, so there's like a collective question somehow when, when you're talking to a group of people. And even though there's not one specific question, there's kind of like you get right. hit with an energy of a question and, and you kind of respond to that intuitively. Right. That's that these people are coming with that in, in the classes there's there's a, always like I, probably 10 recurring questions you know uh how can i find my life purpose um, you relationships, know relationships money sex right? yeah purpose. mostly around purpose and uh how to find you that because that's what, what can i do you. yeah how can i uh, develop it uh what if i can't ever find it is there one for everybody uh you know 
I've actually started asking people, if you did know your life purpose, how would you feel? And I found there's a lot of fear around it. If someone, if God came down and said, this is your life purpose, it seems like a lot of people felt like they couldn't live up to it, or what if it wasn't the right one? You think if God told you, you think it would be the right one, but I got well, a lot of fear. Well, not if you're in a fear. momentum mm -hmm. going in a certain direction, and this go, oh my right. God, now i got to actually got to do this? Yeah, this exactly. Like, oh now God. I have to do it. This now I have to live up to this, right. this is, you know. So. Yeah, I could bluff until that would happen. Right, right. If I don't so, know what it is, then right. I can't be held accountable, right? right. But if I know what it is, no then I have to do it. To hold me to right. It. So don't tell me what it is, right. because then I won't have to actually do it. Right. So there's a lot of insecurity around it. But you know what? That's what we came here to do. We all Absolutely. came here to do something, and we and to we manifest that mm -hmm, experience. to create, yeah. to love, to be compassionate, and learn the basic things. We all have the same purpose in some ways. Exactly. You know, and to create, to, you know, to complete some karma with somebody in our family, maybe, or somebody we meet along the way. We have contracts with people to meet certain people at certain times. Have you felt that? Like yeah, absolutely. You've been introduced to this to yeah, it's always, the right person. It's, yeah, it's always perfect as you're moving right. through. Right, I really I mean, feel that. I was saying to somebody earlier today that faith is you'll get what you need when you need it, not what you want when you want it. Right. So you can walk as if somebody's holding up your bike from the mm -hmm. back. So mm -hmm. you, you know you're free. Right. Yeah, you know, and you're not walking in fear that you won't get what you need. Mm -hmm. And that you know is very liberating. You know when people start to have that, and it is just by keep continually trusting that intu intuition and building up that momentum mm -hmm. and building up that faith mm -hmm. and that's you know what you do in you know in all the workshops and you know I mean all the guests from different spokes of the wheel are basically you know right. because somehow the show gets people who that's their intention mm -hmm. and I think it's good not to have all the answers because then you're open to discovering something that you wouldn't even have had a question for so you know it's good to not know things and it's good to be able to live in uncertainty when you're on the spiritual path you know because if you have it all figured out you're going to be uh, shut down I think you're going to just be a little too arrogant probably you know and so it's better to be more like open to whatever's coming but willing to do whatever it takes to move in a direction that has some heart for you and, and you find that once people get you know, to talking about it, it's just like shining light on the darkness. It's true. I think people just talking about things sometimes come up with their own answers. And, you know, um, sometimes you have, it's interesting because there's no one answer. There's no one truth. And sometimes when a person's feeling like, I, I remember one woman I talked about in the book, Mary, she wanted to start a new career, but she couldn't uh, get it going. And so she had to make money because of, you know, she was a single mother. So she, her decision was to give up on the job or the career that she really had a lot of heart for. And she decided to give all her energy to the job that she had as a marketing director somewhere. She really hated this job. So, that happens she, so often. She, she, so this was a this was a case where she turned toward the job. She literally turned herself toward it, gave all of her attention to it, was there, forgot the other one, and within about three weeks, her whole life changed for the positive. Uh, it's you know somebody moved and she got another position in the company which she really liked more, it was more suited to her. She got a company car. She like tripled her salary. And it was she became she was there for three more years. She was totally happy. Yeah. And later she went into business for herself but in a totally different vein she started doing uh, research for lawyers but she was self-employed for this with lawyers is always yep. and she loved it and it was so different i said well so what happened to the original job the original career yeah. she wanted to do counseling with uh, children around money to strengthen their you know their understanding of how to handle money and she said you know what i don't think i was emotionally ready to do that right, so the universe right didn't time. let her right, exactly. proceed in that direction so the wisdom was to let it go surrender and get right. give heart to what was happening, and then new things happened right. along you, that path. Your cup is bigger, so you can take right. more. So it's, there's no one answer to how to segue into the next thing, but the best answer, I think, is just to be alert to how you're feeling, what's happening, and go. Go with. You know, use your intuition. Right. Use your, give it your best shot. Wow. Okay. Well, I think <laughs> again we're coming to the end of the show. I know these shows go really fast. So I just want to, you know, just thank you all for coming and, you know, thank Carol and Sudama for the incredible, you know, experiences and, and all their life's work that they brought into, you know, sharing with you and coming. I mean, uh, Carol came all the way from, you know, the Berkeley area just to be on the show. She came in today and is flying out tomorrow. And, you know, just, you know, just thanks for all your information and all your help and all everything. If you need any information about Carol or Sudamo, 
about their books, the CDs, where they are. Uh, Alan, 805-687-2053. Also, we've been getting a lot of calls about the Bridging Heaven and Earth Foundation. If you want any information about that, same number. We'll give you all the information. Thank you. God bless you. Come again. We love you. Good night. Thank you. Mm -hmm.